My name is Kramer. You're at the deep end in Black Rock City, Nevada, and this is TV Free Burning Man. Black Rock City really is a year-round process. We first show up here on the site around the 1st of August and bring our staff out here and start doing the surveying. They survey the city first and we start putting in the street markers. We put in the fence. We bring the staff on site and we start feeding folks. <laughs> and we have about 150 to 200 just working DPW staff. DPW is the Department of Public Works. The name was created in 1997. After the 1997 event, they were trying to define what was the structure, what, what, what were the roustabouts and the carnival carnies that came out here to set things up and take it down again. And so they came up with the Department of Public Works. Ah! It's a small, tight-knit group of DPW hardcore people that are going to be spending a good two to three months out here. DPW is at least a good 180, 200 people. Volunteers, about 180, maybe 150. Long story short, it starts with the Golden Spice Ceremony, which uh, this year I believe was on August 3rd, 2006. This year is going to really, really rock and roll. Love you, Marion! <laughs> it's the very first thing that goes into the ground, and it's pounded into the ground at the very point underneath the man, directly under the man. It'll also be the last thing that gets pulled out, provided we can find it. It takes two full days using semi-flatbed trucks to get the main large pieces. It takes another three more days after that to bring smaller things like trailers, uh, people's uh, living situation, boxes, smaller uh, stuff that go in the back of flatbeds. So really, Transpo is a, a good five days worth of work. We have a fuel depot that deals with refueling all the generators. That's another part of infrastructure. We got all types of fuels here. We got Hydrogen, oxygen, propane, acetylene, methanol, gasoline, diesel, you name it, we got it. It is protected by a minefield, though. Should participants try to get at the fuel, they'll be killed, surely. Center Camp is one of the first points that's surveyed off the Golden Spikes location. It's over 38,000 square feet of shade space, one of the largest shade spaces created. The Center Camp Cafe is one of the first things to start getting built, and the whole construction of Black Rock City happens in about a two-week period, 16 days times, I believe, and uh, Center Camp Cafe takes about 16 days to build. The DBW staff is a really, really diverse bunch of folks. They're from all over the country. Uh, they hail from New York and Minneapolis, a lot of Austin folks, San Francisco, Los Angeles, Seattle. Uh, those are some of the major cities that folks are from. And they range in uh, skill set and background and experience from being uh, baristas in coffee shops, we've got computer programmers, uh, we've got retiree. Uh, it's usually similar to the demographic at Burning Man. It's certainly not for the money, it's for the love of doing it, the love of making Black Rock City happen. The, the, the pride we have in, in creating this city so that 30 plus 5,000 people can come out here and show us what they got. This is what we got, and they come out and show us what they got. Black Rock City 2006, open future. <laughs>
It's, cocktail. it's wow. definitely the best blend of drinks around. <laughs> We're on day three of the build since we got here. Um, stage is halfway through. We've actually finished all the wiring. So we did some electrical work in here. So everything's all set for three circuits for the generator. To supply the deep end bar, we need 270 cases of Red Bull, 70 cases of booze, most, predominantly vodka, and then assorted mixers, we spent about another $2,000 between cranberry, orange juice, lemonade, fruit punch syrup. Uh, when it comes to blenders, we're looking at seven Vitamix blenders. Every small piece, one step at a time, all these people come and start helping, and eventually it's all done. And People come over and say, you guys are the best party on the planet. here on the playa shooting a behind the scenes documentary on the making of the hope flower and the creeper fear trap. I, I shot a lot of behind the scenes stuff in LA back at their their um, warehouse with um, they manufactured all the parts and even even down to the tiniest detail and then we brought it out here. My name is Patrick Chern aka 11 I'm spearheading this uh, this flower and flytrap project this year. This uh, this team of hundred foot tall traveling plants. That uh, one's a giant daisy type flower and the other one's a giant flytrap. They're pretty badass. So we need you know heavy equipment operators. We need fabric sewers. We need dancers and performers on that end. All of that comes to bear. So there's there's a real opportunity for people to step up. I love the collaborative experience and the, the cooperation amongst all these people. What's really beautiful is the process of, of empowering all these people that not necessarily had an artistic bent to start with, but now have a sense of ownership and pride in the final product. So it's the process that counts, not the end result. Although the end result is pretty beautiful. Getting a, a front row seat to the building from, from the beginning, the concept, to the, the end and uh, seeing the result and watching everyone's reactions on the playa to this project has is, is been amazing and is going to continue to be amazing. like the city's here, it definitely is. You can see the streets filling in, but tomorrow we're gonna wake up and everything is gonna be filled in. There, there are people lining up at the gates and the, the density of the city, it's gonna basically double overnight. It is just about to go off. You guys have not seen anything yet. It's gonna only get crazier, as you can see. <laughs> 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 we're, 